Hey again, it's Christina from Sunshine and Flora. So today I'm doing a little bit of an experiment and I thought that this would be a fun one to set my camera up for you guys. I recently found a box of ranunculus corms that I never planted out or started this spring. So I thought, I wonder if ranunculus will grow in the fall. So I'm gonna try and do it. So um, according to my uh, invoice that's in here. I got these from the group um, Wholescale for the Small Scale Farmer that a guy named Jake runs. And in here are a hundred corms of the Aviv mix. And so it's all different colors. Um, they look really good. Um, I mean, they've just been sitting in where I have all of my other bulbs stored at when I did that this winter. So they have been in a cool, dark location. None of them look moldy. They look exactly the same as all the other ones I started this spring. So I'm going to start soaking these today and get them planted in soil to pre-sprout them just to see if I can put these out in my greenhouse and grow them um, later in the fall when it's cool and maybe I'll be able to get some blooms for Thanksgiving. I have no idea if this is going to work but I am going to try it. So the first thing I need to do is get these soaking. So I'm going to show you how I do that and then in a few hours once these are done hydrating I'll show you how I put them in soil to pre-sprout them. So here's the box that I found, and let me just show you what these look like. Here's what all the little ranunculus corms look like. I mean, they all look really, really good. So I'm gonna start soaking these. They're gonna soak for about three to four hours, and then I'm gonna get them in soil. And wouldn't that be just so fun if this actually worked? So I'm gonna get these back in the box. And then I'm gonna do this back in my little utility room here at my photography studio. So I'm just gonna put one of my buckets from Johnny's in the sink. And you want just kind of normal temperature water. That feels pretty good. So I'm just gonna let this fill up. All right, so that is almost full. Now I cannot put my corms directly in here or they're gonna float all over. So I have one of these organza bags. I think this is the six by nine size. I'm gonna put my corms in here and that keeps them all contained, but still lets the water circulate through the bag. Okay, there it is. They're all in the bag. I have the strings cinched at the top and I'm just gonna put this down in my water. There, they're starting to soak. Now, you want to have a little air going through your water. So I'm just gonna run it, if you can see that stream. That's probably even a little bit much. I just wanna run it at a little bit of a trickle and then that aerates the water while these are soaking. I know it's kinda hard to see, but they are down in the water there. And this is gonna take a few hours for these to soak. So I will check back and this video will continue when they're all hydrated. Okay, so I'm about halfway through my time. Let's check on these. Oh yeah, those are looking much bigger. I'm gonna put them back into the water, let them go for a while longer, and then we'll come back and get them in the soil. All right, it's been three hours, so I'm gonna take these out and get these in the soil. Oh, and I can definitely tell that these have gotten a lot bigger in size. All right, so I just took these out of the water and I can tell that they are a lot bigger in size. So I'm gonna open up the bag here. You can tell just by looking through the bag that they are a lot more plump. Oh yeah, those are absolutely perfect. So when I did this earlier this spring, I was really nervous about having my soil too moist and letting the corms rot, uh, but I actually was a little too over worried about that. And in fact, I had the soil a little bit too dry and they took longer to sprout than they normally should have. And so what I learned was to keep the soil moist all the time and not to let it dry out at all. I also had put 
um, my first tray of corms up on a shelf because I thought it'd be out of the way. You know, it's nice and dark up there. Well, it was just a little too warm. And so I ended up moving the tray down on the floor, which is a cement floor. So that kept the tray much cooler and they sprouted in no time. And so that is exactly what I'm gonna do this time. So I just have this, um, this is one of the trays that goes with one of my 72 cell trays. This is the bottom tray. There are no holes in it, so it will hold water and soil. I have filled this with just a regular potting mix that I have left over from um, planting flowers this summer. It's an organic potting mix. Um, so I have filled the tray, um, not completely full, because what I want to do is I'm going to set the corms on the top and then I want to cover them. So I need to pre-moisten the soil. I cannot find my spray bottle, so I just filled a bottle of water and I'm going to pour it over top of this just a couple times just to moisten the soil. I'm gonna go get one more bottle of water. This is gonna be plenty of moisture for these corms for quite a few days. But again, I don't want them to dry out because I want them to sprout really quickly. So, there's supposed to be 100 corms in that box that I got. And basically, they look like little octopuses if you um, have not seen them before. They have the little legs that come down, and so the growth will actually come out of the top. So you want to place these in the soil with the legs pointing down. So I'm just going to go through here and nestle them right into the soil. Legs down, of course, and I'm going to put just a little bit of space in between each corm. Because when these start sprouting, the roots are going to grow under the soil and it's going to all grow together. So when you pull these out, the roots are going to be all, you know, touching and intertwining. And they lift out really easily, but you don't want them right up next to each other. You want to give just a little bit of space between the corms. And again, this is the Aviv mix. I got these from um, a whole scale for the small scale gardener. It is a Facebook group. And if you are not a member and you grow cut flowers or just are a home gardener that lots, likes to try a lot of different things, I highly recommend that you join because he is constantly offering um, lots of varieties of plants and bulbs and they are really great prices, um, wholesale prices. And you can order smaller quantities as opposed to ordering, you know, a hundred of something. For example, I placed an order for some ranunculus for next year. Um, not the Avid Mix, but I think the Amandine. And I was able to order 10 corms of that variety just to try out and see how that works for me. And so it's a really great resource. So I highly recommend that you join that group. Anyway, I'm gonna quickly get this tray filled and then I will show you how I'm gonna cover this with soil and where these are gonna go. All right, all done. I ended up fitting all of them in this tray. I had to squeeze a few in between. Um, but they all fit, there's space in between all of them. Now, I've noticed these ranunculus corms are a lot smaller than some of the other varieties, um, like the clony, those are much bigger corms. These are smaller corms, so I can get a lot of these in a small space. And again, this is something that I have never tried before. I found these on a shelf and I did not plant these in the spring. So I thought, why not experiment with them? Because I don't know if they'll hold for another winter without being planted. So I hope they grow. I don't know if they'll grow in these conditions, but I just wanted to share with you guys my experience for these. So from what I have read, ranunculus, once you put them in a tray to start pre-sprouting these, they will take three months from the time that you do this till they bloom. So it is almost three months to the day to Thanksgiving from right now. And so I am hoping if this actually works, 
I have blooms for Thanksgiving. So the next thing I need to do is I need to get some soil to top this off. And you don't need a huge layer. You basically just want to cover the corms in the tray. Okay, almost there. Oops. All right, I think that that is plenty. All the corms are covered. So now I'm gonna fill up my water bottle one more time, put another layer of water over this just to moisten that new soil that I put on, and then this part will be done. Okay, and again, normally I would be using a spray bottle to do this, but for some reason I cannot find mine, so I'm trying to spread this as evenly as possible. Now that water settled this top soil a little bit, so I need to sprinkle just a little more on the top to cover some spots. There's just a few of those peeking through. All right, that is good to go. So I will be setting this on the floor of my utility room, which is a cement floor, so it stays nice and cool. That will keep this tray itself cool. And these are going to sit there for 10 to 14 days. And in that time, I will either mist them with water either every day or every other day to keep the soil nice and moist. But in 10 to 14 days, I should start seeing little white sprouts coming up on top of the soil from these corms. And if I have some pictures, from the spring ones I did, I will put them up on the screen. But first you start seeing little white sprouts and then you start seeing the little green shoots. And I think this spring when I planted mine, they were probably three to four inches tall before I actually planted them in the ground. Ranoculus, once you put them outside, they thrive in temperatures that are around 40 degrees, you know, 50 degrees. They really like the cool temperatures. When it gets over 70 degrees, they don't like it, they start dying back. And that is what happened to me this spring with my spring ones. It got way too hot too fast. First we had late freezes and I couldn't put them outside. Then it got way too hot too fast and they died off right away. So my plan is for these is to pre-sprout them inside, let them grow on for a while under my grow lights. Then once I put them outside, I'm hoping that it's cool enough that I can have them in trays in my greenhouse and they will grow on in my green greenhouse staying at those you know nice 50 degree temperatures and maybe i'll have some flowers for this thanksgiving so it'll be a fun experiment i will definitely make sure to keep you guys updated so with that i'm gonna go set these on the floor in my utility room i'll put a picture of that on the screen and then i'll keep you posted on updates so Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for a lot more. We'll see you soon.